after much thought, the slave decided on the following request. To remain all his life with his master, to have all the tobacco he could smoke, and to have a dressing ground with brass buttons on it. In the 1800s, a father-in-law chided a young woman for extravagance in the use of so many new buttons on her dress. Her defense was that the button coverings were scraps of fabric too small for piece quilt work, and the molds were dried peas, which could be salvaged and cooked at a later date. In World War I, an industrialist, industrialist philanthropist organized an activity for a cohort of elderly people who were eager to make some contribution to the Allied effort. <clears throat> the man set aside a corner of his factory and constructed a huge bin filled with buttons of various sizes. Three barrels, designated large, medium, and small, were set up alongside the bins. The team of senior citizens sorted the buttons according to size for use on military uniforms of American servicemen, or so they were told. Day after day, these good-hearted patriots were gratified by sorting buttons and helping to defeat Germany. Lonely souls exchanged gossip and made new friendships, some generating geriatric romances. Each evening after the volunteers left, two burly factory workers came and emptied the barrels back into the bin. The Omaha folks and the boys in Omaha, Nebraska, used to call the ladies of the Eastern Star who mended and sewed buttons on their clothing, the order of the missing button. A Colorado dairyman attached a string magnet to his cow's nose rings in order to attract metal that the cows would otherwise eat. Many items were retrieved, including two old uniform buttons, one from the Spanish Rifle Regiment from the War of 1880, 1880 and the other a German or Austrian pattern, possibly from World War I. Stages of mourning. Full mourning 
court said the fashion black buttons were extremely popular. Most people couldn't afford jet, so they substituted black glass. And if I could interject that, there are millions of black glass buttons floating around. Old ones, new ones, every kind of uh, black ones. Black buttons were worn by a young woman on her garter in the roaring 20s, and I have one here, it's kind of interesting. They were given to a young man to be worn as sleepovers, announcing that the two were sweethearts.
room covered with 60,000 buttons. It weighed 50 pounds. The last undisputed Berlin King leader died in 1954. His coffin was covered with his 30,000 coat buttons and was carried through London, followed by pearly mourners in their glittering costumes. Literary buttons, buttons in literature. Fiction writers have used buttons for descriptive purposes to show emotion and clarify situations, to add richness and shading to characterizations and to further plots. Even diarists and biographers throughout history have expressed themselves by using button expressions, analogies, and symbolism. The great novelists of the 1800s frequently incorporated buttons into their stories. Charles Dickens was personally, as well as professionally, keenly interested in buttons. As a reporter and publisher, he wrote articles on buttons and their manufacture in Birmingham. In Household Words, he wrote about buttons. There is surely something charming in seeing the smallest thing done so thoroughly, as if to remind the careless that whatever is worth doing is worth doing well. In the same publication, Dickens wrote that scenes on buttons were as vivid and faithful as if the designers were busy on a wine cup or a king. Two children's books from the mid-1900s that relied on buttons for plot were The Charm String by Beth Torian Polensky and Howard E. Wilson about a girl who was given her grandmother's charm string and Mr. Pink and the House on the Roof by Edith Head about the owner of a button factory who kept his factory from becoming a zipper factory. In a book for older children involving buttons and set in the Revolutionary War called Buttons for General Washington, Peter Rock recognizes a possible mission of a 14-year-old spy who carried messages in the buttons of his coat to George Washington's camp. Um, I have that uh, book here. And another um, children's picture book, a very popular one, called Corduroy by Don Freeman, attached major importance to the story of a missing button on a stuffed bear named Corduroy. Well, I, have, I do have a little writing of Benjamin Franklin. Dost thou love life? Then do not waste or squander time. For that is the stuff life is made of. Let us all say there is time for kindness and for giving, time for buttoning and happy living. Enemies of the fancy buttons are boreholes, modern synthetics, spin dryers, costume jewelry, and zippers. In time past, one could tell a person's good taste and wealth by the kind of buttons he wore on his waistcoat. It's not that easy anymore. A zipper doesn't tell anything about a person. Buttons are said to have kept their uh, no noisy nemesis, the zipper, off the market for 30 years after it was invented. Of course, buttons don't really compete with zippers. A zipper isn't beautiful. It isn't utilitarian. A button provides eye appeal, and whoever heard of a family zipper box? The common button has remained virtually unchanged, irreplaceable, and as universal and permanent as the wheel. Buttons that can be snapped, screwed, or tied.